Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Ronald's Modern Life. I am Ronald and in today's video we will be discussing my Mondo poster collection in celebration of MondoCon happening in Austin, Texas on September 14th and 15th. Now you may be wondering what's Mondo? Mondo is probably the biggest gallery that deals with amongst other things alternative film posters. What is an alternative film poster? Well, pretty much it is the desire for movie posters to stop looking like crap. Typically, the studios give us posters that look like this. Instead of posters that we would rather like this. These are all limited edition posters. Typically they are all made by hand. Most of them are screen printed, but you can Google what that means. They also have a huge resale value. Posters that can go for about $60 can sometimes sell for thousands on eBay. For more information, I do suggest the documentary 24 by 36. I'll put a link in the description below. That documentary goes into way more detail in terms of the history of film posters as well as this whole movement. Please note as well that when I say Mondo in this video, I'm kind of referring to it the same way that you would refer to Kleenex when you're talking about tissues. Mondo is the biggest gallery, but they are not the only one, and some of these posters actually do not come from Mondo. Also, the order of these posters are gonna be in most recently acquired, except for this one. This one I keep separate from everything else only because it is quite special to me. Um, I wanted this poster so badly and I finally got it um, and, I, and I leave it like this because it is packaged so nicely. It's not framed um, and I cannot wait to frame it but as of right now it will stay kind of as it is. Um, you may be getting some glare only because there is some plastic. It's a little bit confusing because this poster actually was the same poster that was used for the movie, but this is not, you know, a massively produced print. Um, so it's hard to kind of see on camera, but the mother lettering is gold and embossed, as well as some other details, some personal details like that, as well as on embossed heart crystal there, which if you've seen the movie, then you know what that's all about. And only 100 of these exist, and I have number 68. I also just love, for those who have seen the movie, there's all these little Easter eggs in the actual print itself that I really enjoy looking at. There's one more, where is it? Oh, right here. And it's just, it's hard to tell because it is a bit glossy because of the plastic protective coating, but this looks like a painting. Next we have this print. This was released on Alien Day. And, you know, for people who know anything about these types of posters, Alien is not very hard to find. Uh, these posters are kind of everywhere. Um, for some reason, people just love making alien posters. Uh, this is actually my second alien poster. But the reason why I got this one is because I really enjoy the way that it looks. It looks like a poster that would be decades and decades old. As you can see, this is number 35 of 126. And I just love the details. And like I said, this is actually my second alien poster. I'm looking forward to showing you the first one in a few minutes. All right, this next one is a bit smaller, as you can see. It's not as big as the usual. But this is for, obviously, Back to the Future Part 2. For me, my favorite types of posters are the ones that are kind of like a slice of the film. So like a scene of the movie or something like that that shows the tone of the movie, but also if you haven't seen it, you don't know exactly what is going on in the scene, 
but it will intrigue you to possibly see the movie. Also, sneak peek of the next print that I'm going to be showing you. And I also do like how it's printed. Silver is a little bit metallic and obviously 122 out of 250. Next up, as you probably saw in that last clip, is Back to the Future Part 3. Uh, this was actually, it was released as a set of 1, 2, and 3. I didn't really like the first one all that much. Once again, same kind of idea. Just a scene taken directly out of the movie. If you've seen the movie, you know exactly what's happening, but if you don't, uh, I think that this image would persuade you into seeing it. Um, I like it how we have Clara hanging off the back there with Doc reaching out for her and then the DeLorean doing its thing. And this would be number 61 out of 175. And of course they have to use the current logo. So of course this is for Back to the Future 3, but it has to say a Comcast company. All right, so this is one of my few uh, horizontal prints. And of course you are seeing, again, another sneak peek of what's to come. But this one I really like mostly because of all the details. Uh, the red, it's not really picking up that well on camera, but the red is a very kind of deep red. If you look right here, in his shadow is Jack holding the ax. And then in the mirror, you can see Jack. It's those type of details that make me a collector of these types of posters because typically anything being released by the studio is not going to have that level of detail. And once again, like I was saying before, another kind of just a slice of the movie. You, If you don't know the movie, you don't know what is happening in this scene. But I think it does a great job of showing the feel and the atmosphere of The Shining. All right, so this one was actually a birthday present and it's one of my favorites. Obviously, it's The Lion King, a movie that everybody who's a certain age most definitely cherishes. This is number 123 of 490. So this actually had a pretty decent run. But I do like little details here, like the artist's name and the year that it was produced. And this print is just so crisp. It's so well printed. It's just very, very crisp and clean. I love the art design. It's just very modern. and every character is represented. You have the various animals of the Pride Lands. You have the iconic opening scene right there. You have Scar, who looks amazing. And you have the hyenas behind them. Not to be forgotten, you have Timon and Pumba, and I love that little design right there, right above the number. This is, again, like I said, one of my favorite prints. There are some that will be framed sooner than others. This will definitely be one that is framed as soon as I get the chance. And of course, to go from Lion King to this. <laughs> so obviously this is hereditary, I can't think of a better image to kind of describe the movie, but also to not give too much away. Obviously, it's a bird, head is cut off, ants all over it, which is a quite memorable scene. I'm not gonna spoil anything, but something very similar happens within the movie. The one thing that I didn't even know about until I actually got the print home was and it might be hard to get on camera yeah, so this detail is actually impossible to get on camera uh you can barely see the number right there so this is 37 out of 200 but right above that there is a little symbol right here but it is embossed so you can feel it that's actually the payment symbol which is kind of 
Easter egged in right there and it does make an appearance in a few scenes in the movie. All right, another print that I did not take out of the plastic is this Mad Max Fury Road variant. Um, this is the, I think it's the shiny and chrome variant is what they call it. There is some mirrored text right there as well as some other, you know, mirror design on pretty much everything that is silver in the print is that metallic mirror finish. As you can see, only 20 of these. Once again, a print that will be framed as soon as I get the chance. All right, this is my second Baby Driver poster. This is actually a private commission poster. Uh, it was kind of cool. I was one of the people to kind of you know, debate what the slogan would be, or the tagline would be on the poster, as well as the actual color. Um, if I'm being honest, I didn't like the mint background at first, but then once I received it, I actually like it. There are also some really cool details in this print that I like a lot. I got number 47. Has a little stamp right there of the artist and the date. And again, just really cool detail in the whole thing. Even down to the song that he's listening to on his iPod. The style of the way that it's drawn looks really cool. And speaking of detail, we have this Coraline poster, which is just absolutely filled with details. So let me give you a shot of the whole poster. So again, it is a horizontal poster. You have the jumping mice right there in the corner. Of course, this is the other mother side. So you have the shadow right there of her kind of in her true form. And then, of course, you have the other father right there. The moon has the button going over it. You have her actual parents right there in the snow globe. And you have Coraline right there next to her doll. And then we enter in kind of the more sad blue tone of the real world. And then right there next to the Mondo logo, number 106. Next up, we have this snow piercer. This is my second snow piercer. The first will be later on in this video. This was also a private commission. As you can kind of see right there, only 75 of these exist. And this, once again, looks completely different from the first poster that I got. I really like these cutaways that are in the actual print. So right there at the very top, you have a scene in the movie right there. And then as you pan down, you have another scene, another quite memorable scene in the movie. With the tagline, fight your way to the front. And as you pan down further, there's another scene. Once again, we got another horizontal one here. This one obviously for Back to the Future. Once again, this is a slice of the movie right here. This poster is just absolutely packed with detail. Scroll around right there. You got Biff's car. You got 
the rain and George watching the whole scene. Then of course you got Marty trying to escape on the back of the truck. Now what I do like here is all these newspapers are all little Easter egg to the actual movie. The enchantment under the, under the sea dance. Number, looks like 14 or 74, can't tell, out of 100. Now something that I really liked about this poster was for some reason it reminds me of those 90s holographic stickers. You know the ones where I used to have the character and then like kind of this like silver holographic background? For whatever reason, that's what this poster reminds me of. And it's fitting because I, Tanya is obviously about quite a memorable situation that happened in the 90s. Now I can't tell you the number because this print is not numbered, but I believe this had a decent run in terms of, you know, Mondo at least. All right, this is probably one of my smallest posters, but this is for obviously A Clockwork Orange with the scene that we all know about. 23 out of 100, so not very many of these out there in the world. Um, this, I believe, was also a variant. Yeah, I have a thing for Mad Max Fury Road prints. Uh, this was the first one that I purchased. Um, the blue is not picking up super well on camera, but the blue is very vibrant, and it sticks out very much against all the red that's in this print. I definitely like details like that of the Immortan Joe symbol. So, turns out a lot of these were, were made. This is number 2,634 out of 2,765. Occasionally, Mondo will have what's called the timed release, where they will make as many posters as people order. So they'll say, hey, you guys have a week or so, and whatever is ordered, that's what gets made. So it seems like this one was one of those timed releases where everybody who possibly wanted one, got one. One of my favorite movies, Scott Program vs. The World. Once again, if you did not see this movie, you don't know what is happening at all in this print. But if you have seen the movie, you probably still don't know what's happening in this scene. I also like that it has the artist's name in the credits here. And of course, number 112 of 250. I really like the style of this poster. It's not exactly the same style as in the comics, but it still has a pretty interesting look. So next up we have these two prints. Uh, I'm not even gonna call them posters because they're really not posters. They're more like family portraits. Uh, so right here we have E. Morton Joe, obviously from Mad Max. I told you I have quite a few Mad Max stuff. And then right there is obviously Max. They are signed. This is 629 out of 890. And then this one is 629 as well out of 770. So this is quite a unique one. Truth be told, I know almost nothing about this print. I saw it for sale. I fell in love with it, so I purchased it. Um, but I don't know really anything about it. Um, obviously, it is from A Clockwork Orange with all the with all these uh, various Disney characters playing those parts, and of course, Mickey is the leader. The year and only fifteen of these were ever made. Next we have this one right here. I wouldn't really consider this a poster. This is more of a print and it is definitely in kind of a weird ratio here. And of course you can see a sneak peek again of the next print. 171 out of 300. So speaking of MondoCon, this print actually starts all the prints that I got from MondoCon Four, which was two years ago since they skipped last year. I know I said this before, but this is probably one of my favorites. If not 
my favorite. I remember walking around MondoCon and I was carrying around a giant, you know, plastic bag with all my prints in them because I didn't have a poster tube. And this print I had facing front. And I had several people come up to me and it was like, damn, that's such a great print. I had one guy who said he's not a big fan of the movie, but he absolutely loves this print. I was lucky enough to get it signed by the artist as well. And as you can see right here, this is number 47 of 225. I didn't realize this when I got it, but it might not show up too well on camera, but his teeth are shiny. There's metallic ink on his teeth because in the movie, James Franco wears a grill. So it's details like that that make Mondo prints that much more interesting. And of course, I also love that right here, there's a little Mondo logo, Federal Reserve Bank of Mondo. And once again, another Lion King print. I am a child of the 90s, what do you expect? Once again, it's hard to pick up on camera, but the color of this print is amazing. It is so vibrant. It is signed by the artist and it is also numbered. This is number 12 out of 20. All right, I can't believe this is my only Toy Story print. I'm gonna have to get another one. Uh, but this one is the Dr. Evil Pork Chop version. Um, not really a Toy Story poster, I would say, at least not for the movie. Uh, this is kind of, you know, a little Duel at Dawn poster right here. It's made by the same artist that made the Lion King one that I showed off way earlier in, in the beginning of the video. And this is number 21 of 150. It is a smaller print. It is not the biggest one that I have. I will definitely be getting another Toy Story poster that is, you know, the proper size. Earlier in the video, I mentioned my first Baby Driver poster and here it is. Again, it is signed by the artist. It is not numbered. And as also stated previously, this is my first Snowpiercer poster. It was really cool to talk to the artist as well. Um, he was very, very talkative and he was obviously having a great time being at MondoCon and speaking with people like me who collect his art. This also has, again, it's really hard to see on camera, but the ink also looks a little bit shiny. The gray, the metallic looks very shiny. Obviously we have two characters in the film. And once again, this is a scene directly out of the movie. And at the very bottom we have this train scene. It's also an AP and signed, but not numbered. All right, pretty much the crown jewel of my collection. No, it's not this white board. But under here is a one of a kind print that I obviously keep extra protected. And that is, so this is the hand embellished alien print. This is a one of a kind, the original print looks like this. So all the color that you're seeing that was added in after the fact, pretty much like painted in. And this exact print, because it is hand embellished, there is not another one like this anywhere. This was pretty much the whole reason why I went to MondoCon. Um, as soon as the doors opened, the first day I ran to his booth he, I believe he had something like 12, maybe even less than that, I don't remember. But he only had a limited amount of these and each one was absolutely different. The first day he actually sold out of them one person in front of me. So I got there and I was one person too short to pick up a print. So I came back even earlier the following day and I managed to get this one and this one was the second to last one to go. If I was two people too late, I would have missed out.
It's also cool to look at the back of the print. So you can see kind of all the marks from the painting. All right, we're coming down to the end here. This is actually my second Mondo poster. This was another timed release. As you can see, this is number 249 out of 2030. Once again, I sound like a broken record, but the blue does look different on film. It's much darker. It looks pretty much like dusk. And in person, all these little points of light are a lot more vivid. And finally, my first Mondo print, which was for Get Out. And then right here we have the artist stamp, as well as the number, so that was 117 out of 350. Thanks so much for sticking through to the end of this video. I know it was a long one and I apologize. There was just a lot of information to cover. Go ahead and do me a favor and hit that like button if you liked the video. Also, leave me a comment. I want to know which poster you guys like the most. And if you are interested in this type of content, definitely subscribe. I will be at MondoCon in Austin, Texas on September 14th and 15th, and I will be making a ton of videos. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day. See you soon. Bye.